Heart attack and stroke rates lower after COVID-19 vaccination. A study of 46 million adults has shown that the rate of heart attacks and strokes fell after COVID-19 vaccination. The new analysis covered almost the entire adult population of England. In the study, researchers from the universities of Cambridge, Bristol, and Edinburgh, supported by the British Heart Foundation, reviewed the medical records of 46 million Britons between December 8, 2020, and January 23, 2022. The researchers compared the rates of cardiovascular disease before COVID-19 vaccination and two years after the vaccination program was introduced. The results, published in Nature Communications, showed that the rate of heart attack and stroke was up to 10% lower in the 13 to 24 weeks after the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine. After the second dose, the rate was up to 27% lower after receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine and up to 20% lower after the second dose. Lower after the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. The rates of other blood clots, mainly pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis, showed a similar pattern. We studied COVID-19 vaccines and cardiovascular disease in almost 46 million adults in England and found similar or lower rates of common cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks and strokes, after each vaccination than before or without vaccination. This research adds to the large body of evidence for the safety of the COVID-19 vaccination program, which has been shown to protect against severe COVID-19 and has saved millions of lives worldwide said Dr. Samantha I.P. of the University of Cambridge, a CO author of the study. As we read in a statement published on the University of Cambridge website, previous studies have shown that the rates of rare cardiovascular complications are higher after some COVID-19 vaccines. Myocarditis and pericarditis have been reported with mRNA vaccines such as the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Thrombocytopenia has also been reported with the AstraZeneca vaccine. The new analyses confirm these findings, but importantly, they do not identify new cardiovascular conditions associated with COVID-19 vaccination, suggesting that the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risks. The incidence of cardiovascular disease is higher after COVID-19, particularly in severe cases. This may explain why the incidence of heart attacks and strokes is lower in vaccinated people than in unvaccinated people, but further explanation is beyond the scope of this study. The COVID-19 vaccination program has started vigorously in the UK, with more than 90% of people receiving a dose of COVID-19 vaccine. The population over 12 years of age had been vaccinated with at least one dose by January 2022. This England-wide study provides patients with reassurance about the cardiovascular safety of the first, second and booster doses of COVID-19 vaccine. It shows that the benefits of the second and booster doses, with fewer common cardiovascular events such as heart attacks and strokes after vaccination, outweigh the very rare cardiovascular complications, said Professor William Whiteley from the University of Edinburgh. Given the critical role of vaccines in protecting people from COVID-19, it is important that we continue to investigate their benefits and risks. The availability of population-wide data has allowed us to investigate different combinations of COVID-19 vaccines and consider rare cardiovascular complications. This would not have been possible without the very large data sets to which we are privileged to have access and our strong inter-institutional collaboration, said Dr. Vinixia Walker from the University of Bristol. The mystery of the origin of the Flores Hobbits Homo floresiensis is the smallest of our ancient relatives. Scientists estimate that it was only about a meter tall. New discoveries of fossilized bones from 700,000 years ago, including the smallest humerus ever found, suggest that the species commonly referred to as the Flores Hobbit evolved from our much larger relatives. In 2003, the remains of an extinct hominid species called Homo floresiensis were discovered in a cave on the Indonesian island of Flores. It is the smallest of our relatives. Scientists estimate that it was only about a meter tall. Due to its short stature, the species is also known as the Flores Hobbit. The discovery of bones in the Liang Bua cave on Flores has surprised the scientific community. Researchers have long wondered whether they were dealing with the remains of a previously unknown hominid species or a dwarfed representative of another of our relatives. 
Ultimately, it turned out to be the smallest of our ancient ancestors. A nearly complete skeleton of a woman was found in the Liang Bua cave, along with the remains of eight other representatives of this species. Dating indicated that they are about 50,000 years old. It is known that at that time Homo sapiens had already settled in Australia, and Homo erectus lived even earlier, several hundred kilometers away on the island of Java. It is possible that representatives of these species reached the island and met the tiny hobbits. It is quite possible that they were responsible for their extinction. In 2014, teeth, a fragment of a jaw, and stone tools from 700,000 years ago were discovered in another part of the island, which also seemed to belong to Homo floresiensis. However, these body parts are not the best for determining the height of the individual to whom they belonged. But scientists have recently found three new hobbit fossils from the same period. Among them is the smallest humerus ever found. Although partial, it is very important and sheds new light on the origins of Homo floresiensis. In a study published in the journal Nature Communications, the scientists show that hobbits likely descended from Homo erectus and evolved their diminutive size relatively soon after arriving on Flores Island. The study showed that the tiny humerus found at Matamenj came from an adult. Matamenj is located about 75 kilometers from Liang Bua Cave, a sparsely populated grassland area on the island. It was there that teeth and jaw fragments of Homo floresiensis were discovered in 2014. They belonged to at least three individuals with jaws and teeth slightly smaller than Homo floresiensis, suggesting that small body size evolved early in the history of flores hominids. During the study, some of the teeth found were considered to be an intermediate form between early Homo erectus and Homo floresiensis, but due to the small number of specimens it was not entirely clear which species they belonged to. The newly discovered bones help solve the mystery of the origin of the flores hobbits, especially the lower half of the humerus. It belonged to an adult individual. Based on the estimated length of the bone, the team was able to calculate the height of this hobbit's body at around 100 centimeters. This is about 6 centimeters shorter than the estimated height of the skeleton from the Liang Bua cave. This humerus of an adult from 700,000 years ago is not only shorter than Homo floresiensis, it is the smallest hominid humerus known from the fossil record, said Professor Adam Brum from the Australian Research Centre for Human Evolution at Griffith University, a co-author of the paper. This very rare specimen confirms our hypothesis that the ancestors of Homo floresiensis were extremely small in terms of body size. The small proportions of this limb bone clearly show that the early ancestors of hobbits were even smaller than previously thought, he added. The bones from the Mata Menge site represent a total of 10 fossil specimens and come from at least 4 individuals, including 2 children. All are anatomically very similar to Homo floresiensis from Liang Bua and can be considered an older form of this species. However, although these specimens were direct ancestors of the Liang Bua hobbits, this earlier form had less specialized teeth. In addition, the researchers argue that the tiny humerus indicates that an extreme reduction in body size occurred early in the history of the Flores hobbits. The evolutionary history of the Flores hobbits is still largely unknown said Professor Brum. However, the new fossils strongly suggest that the Hobbit story did indeed begin when a group of early Asian Homo erectus somehow became isolated on this remote Indonesian island, perhaps a million years ago, and over time underwent a drastic reduction in body size, he added. The Mata Menge fossils show that the extremely small body size of Homo floresiensis evolved within the first 300,000 years of their history on the island and then persisted for more than 600,000 years. Why did this happen? That's a difficult question, said Yusuf Keifu of the University of Tokyo, a CEO author of the study. The researchers point to the phenomenon of island dwarfism, in which species become smaller when they live in isolated locations. This is a known evolutionary trend. It is probably due to limited resources on the island. Large body size is needed to fight off predators, but in the absence of this factor, evolution seems to favor smaller size. At Liang Bua, scientists also found remains of Stegodon, an extinct relative of elephants that was only 1.5 meters tall, or 30% of its size on the mainland. <laughs>